First things first when it comes to pinning insects, always make sure that you keep good records of what you have so then you can label the insects according to I'm sorry my collection is a little bit of a mess because I'm going through a relabeling process anyways make sure that your collection is properly labeled and the dates are right so once you collect something in the field write down the date and where you found it um, and then keep it with the insect in whatever container you're keeping it in or if you have any other means of keeping the insect uh, make sure you have anything written down with it and make sure it always stays with it until you pin and label the insect even when pinning it too when it's when your insect is drying you can you may have to um, keep the label with it because you know, things can easily be misplaced so that's the most important part about an insect collection is good documentation. This is for pinning uh, larger bodied insects, soft or hard bodied. Soft bodies, you have to try to dry them out quicker because they will shrivel up. Or you could just preserve them in ethyl eth alcohol as wet specimens. So, first, you're going to need some blue board and some pins or foam, whatever. Some people use cork board. And then a pinning block. The number one hole is an inch in, drilled in. The number two hole is a half inch in. And the number three hole is a quarter inch in. So the number one hole is for the insect, where the insect will lay. Number two hole is for the first level of uh, labeling. And then number three hole is for the third level of labeling. So this is kind of, I did it by number so I don't forget which hole is the right size and also and the order that I need to put them on there. Alright so now that you're all set up and you got your materials you can get your insects however you euthanize them via freezing or um, gas chambers. Right here I've just got a little or CO2 chambers too as well. A little common cricket that you would find at a pet store and whatnot. Um, I freeze this one and it froze pretty much in the position that I wanted to pin it. Um, Alright, so you choose the appropriate size pin. I have a, a bunch of like p old pill containers that I just use with the different sizes of pin. I have two of these that go up up to seven for pin size and then I also have a miscellaneous one too just so if I misplace some pins and I don't know exactly what size they are because some of the sizes are really similar um, I'm gonna go with the number one pin size for this guy actually I might even go lower I, uh, just you don't want it too flimsy on the insect only smaller insects you can go lower. So I'm actually going to go with a zero here. Um, and where you want to pin it is the right side of the thorax here. Straight down, making sure you go straight down and the insect is level. And then once you got it in just a little bit, you take your pinning block and you go to level one you push the pin all the way down till the insect is flat on there take it out and then you can move over back to your blue board press it down to where you there you go where you're level with it and then you can take all more pins you can start positioning I'm going to hold that in place there so it doesn't move around on me. Positioning the insect how you want it to dry. So, got the most anatomically correct, like just a resting. It look, so, it just looks like the insect just died on the pin, even though it really didn't, because that would be inhumane and disgusting. 
Got those out. And making sure everything's as symmetrical as possible. Because if your insect is not symmetrical, it's going to look weird in your collection because insects are <laughs> symmetrical creatures. Looks like I got a little bit of a broken leg here at the joint. Anyways, but you can use the pins to prop and hold things in position. Once you've got everything, there we go. Oh, whoops. Sometimes if legs are in, there we go, perfect. Not cooperating with you. Like right now, look how straight these are. These are not. There we go. Usually it takes quite a few pins to uh, get it into whatever shape you want here. There we go. Make sure everything stays level. And straight. That's not straight. And... There you go. Now you just leave that for however long it takes for it to dry. I usually leave them for about a week until they're completely dry. And then I'll pull them up off of the foam so the undersides at the joints can dry a little too, but by that point they'll be pretty much dry. And then you can label them and then put them into your collection. All right, pinning soft-bodied insects is very similar to pinning hard-bodied insects. Actually, no, it's not really that similar at all. Um, they're still, the labeling is the same, but the trick is is to make little, um, like, uh, what would you call it, little, like, platforms for the small insect to sit on. So you can take, take a label or a piece of heavy card stock and I, most people call them points, that's what they're called. Um, and you can kind of, it's almost like a teardrop shape. It's pointed and then rounded on one end. Um, like a weird pizza slice. See, like that. And then what you can do is just take some scissors and cut that out. And then glue the insect do the tip down here. I'll show you how to do that in a second once I cut this out. Alright, so I've got this cut out and just, you can use your insect block here. You can use a good sized pin. Not You don't want to use anything too flimsy because it's supporting the card and the insect. So just put that on to the level of what the insect's going to be at. So the card is, the little point is also like part of the insect here. So you got your the point on there. And the next step is to take your insect. Uh, in this case, I got a teeny little mosquito here. And what I like to do is take some UV glue, take the head of an unused pin, or just a, any pin <clears throat> that I know I'm not going to use, dip it in the UV, put the tiniest little dot right on the end of it, lay the insect in it, so most of the body is being displayed. Okay, now that you've got your uh, insect pin on there, you can <clears throat> label them just like you would label any other insect. And then you can stick that in your collection. Okay, for labeling your insects, you're going to need a manila card or some heavy card stock. Um, and then mark on here a bunch of squares, depending on how many you need. I just make a lot of them, so then if I screw up, oops, if I screw up with any, um, labeling, I can just throw one away and I have a new one. They're, like, they're three-eighths of an inch wide by three-quarters of an inch long, so they're, they're, they're just little rectangles. Um, a ballpoint pen is fine, something, something... Smaller is all right too if you have more things to write on there. Um, an identification book you can also use field guides online too, but I kind of like paper because you can look at all images and stuff. And also, 
there's more um, things to read about each insect. Um, and then a pinning block, of course, which we've already discussed for uh, pinning the insects. Okay, here I've got a red shanked grasshopper, um, pinned and dried and ready to go. Um, I have the date written down, you just can't see it, but all these other ones have little cards with the dates on the other side, so I don't forget what date I collected them. It's pretty easy for me to remember where I collected them, because obviously it's not that many insects to remember. I have a pretty small collection. It's not like I have a university collection or something big like that. Alright, here's my first little card here. Sorry about my fingernails, they're a little long. I need to clip them. Anyways, um, so first, uh, for your top layer card, should be the name uh, and the date collected. This is my system. Other people do it differently, but most people, most things, most labeling systems have uh, species name, date, um, collector, and where it was collected. Other people also put other things like, like what they collected it on or the, the temperatures and stuff like that too, but that's not as uh, scientific as or as detailed as I want to get with it. I just kind of collect insects for a hobby, so. First we're going to start with the species name of the red shanked grasshopper. Prime my pen. Um, you might want you probably want to write pretty small because these are pretty small but you you could make these a little bigger but you don't want huge cards in your um, collection And then down here is the date collected. This is an older insect that I had. I was just relabeling it to show you guys how to do it. Um, and then that's the first card. And then you take that and you pin it through the first, well the second hole because the first, number one hole was for the insect. Uh, number two hole, you can kind of just center it, your pin right over here. Um, some people do the label, label parallel with the insect. I like to do it, um, perpendicular to the insect, because then you can kind of read the label without having to take the insect out of the collection and rotate it around. And then you have less of a chance of the cards breaking and falling off, too. Uh, collector, that would be me. I just always abbreviate my first name to K. Oops, sorry, we're out of focus here. There we go. And then I write down where I collected it. The phone is ringing. Okay, and then that, you just like the first layer card, you pin it centered over here, and then you go through the number three hole until you your pin hits the bottom, and it's securely on there, and then you should be ready to go, and if you have any other information that you want to write down in your, in a notebook that you have, if you want to do that, you could do that. Like and subscribe if you would like more videos like this and help the channel grow so then we can do bigger and better projects later on down the road.